Good day everyone. In today's video I'm gonna rebuild this uh, 12 volt pack. It's a 4S pack capable of putting out 120 amps continuous through this Anderson plug right here. I use it for spot welding, jump starting cars, uh, just to run in regular 12 volt appliances. But uh, this pack is uh, no good anymore because I used the uh, recycled uh, power tool cells and uh, some of them have failed. So there's a couple banks here uh, like uh, I think like two and four something like that that are constantly losing voltage so i have to constantly maintain this pack and uh kind of getting over it and uh so i'm gonna replace it with some new cells the new cells are gonna be a one two three cells it's a live po4 cells lithium iron phosphates that are gonna closer match 12 volts uh, because we're gonna put uh, four of them in series and uh these cells are brand new so the new pack should last me a lot longer than the, this one lasted about a year and a half or so. So if you guys are interested, stay tuned. All right, I was gonna talk a little more about these cells. Like I said, they are A123s. And then there's a, the model number right here. So I pulled up some of the specifications on them. They're just uh, 1100 milliamp hours at 3.3 uh, volts nominal, which is lower than like 3.6 or 3.7 volts that normally lithium ions run. So like I said, that's gonna help uh, being closer to the real 12 volts. Also, these t cells are capable of putting out 30 amps each. So that's an insane amount of power for these little cells like that. And then they also last a long time. They have over a thousand cycles at uh, 5C discharge. This is, that's crazy. That's real good life. So hopefully this pack will last me a lot longer than the last pack did. Uh, the problem is with the used cells, you just don't know how many times they've been cycled and uh, even though you test the capacity, you make sure they don't discharge and uh, then once you put them to use and start using them, they might only last a few cycles till they fail and uh, once one of them fails, that uh, drags down a whole bank. So I kind of learned my lesson. I mean, I'm uh, if you're on a budget, yes, using the old uh, recycled cells is fine, but uh, if you can, I think the new cells is the way to go that's what i'm learning so far uh so that's what we're gonna do for this pack uh as far as the pack goes uh, what we're gonna do is uh make it 120 amp continuous capable so uh, the way we're gonna do that is uh, we gotta run uh, quite a bit of this nickel strip so nickel strip size is right here uh and for this uh, strip uh recommended it's to run about five amps through each piece of this strip uh, you can run all the way up to 10 amps, but this strip will get hot at 10 amps. At uh, 5 amps, it doesn't get hot, it won't get warm. It's just it's a recommended amount of amperage you want to run through these. So uh, what I'm uh, what I'm gonna do uh, for each group, I'm gonna run uh, one strip across. That will give me 10 strips across. Show you the math over here. So 5 amps each times 10 strips is gonna give me 50 amps. And also I'm gonna crisscross them. So I'm gonna go one like this and one like that. And I keep working all the way down. And I'm gonna have 18 of the strips right there. Give me 90 amps, so total of 140 amps uh, carrying capacity for every cell group. So that's what I'm gonna start on. I'm gonna spot weld all these together. But before I do that is uh, first step would be to check voltage in every individual cell. And uh, what I'm gonna do after checking the voltage, I'm gonna put uh, one of these uh, little, they're like little insulators. Uh, as you can see, the factory already gives you one right there to kind of insulate the negative from the positive, but I'm gonna put an additional one for safety and uh, check the voltage in every individual cell and start putting them together. Let's get going.
Alrighty guys, so I checked the voltage in each individual cell. They're all sitting at 3.3 volts, uh, which is really important to do. So whenever you connect them in parallel, uh, if one cell is charged too high and another one's too low, it's going to try to move the energy from one cell to the other and could damage both cells and start the fire and all kinds of stuff. So it's real important to check, make sure all the cells are sitting at the same voltage, which all of mine are. It's great. I also put the insulators on. Like you saw in a little time lapse, and uh, I put uh, put uh, all the cells together with a hot glue and a uh, little captain tape. Finally, well, picked me up some of this stuff. It's what everybody uses, and it seems a pretty pretty like a good tape, a little better than electrical tape for these kind of projects. So uh, yeah, I used the hot glue and the captain tape to kind of put all these cells together, so it's, it holds as one block. I don't use the cell holders because I'm too cheap. I <laughs> just use the hot glue, and plus it's uh, you can. Uh, pack them together a little tighter without the cell holders so the next step I'm gonna start uh, using my nickel strip right here and uh, my spot welder I'm gonna use my pack for one last time to build this pack and we're gonna disassemble it uh, so anyways uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this little wiring schematic here I'm gonna start on uh, this side so I'm gonna wire in the middle ones and then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna wire like uh, spot weld together this set in this bank and uh, go back and then I'm gonna add uh, some tabs to each end for the big wire and you'll see how, how it will be when we get there but yeah anyways I'm just gonna start the spot welding uh, these cells together let's get started Alright guys, I just uh, finished spot welding this pack. It was a little bit of a pain because uh, I believe what's going on is that uh, these cells have a real thin casing and it was super easy to blow through it with my spot welder. You can see it, really see it on this one right here. It just went right through and uh, I mean uh, I may be messed up on this ones, but uh, on these ones uh, I wasn't giving it too much power and it was just blow right through the casing. And if I turned down my spot welder, what would happen? It was just a nickel strip would just rip right off. So I had a little bit of a struggle getting the, the spot welder just right. So the nickel strips will stay on there and also uh, not blow through the cell. So I ruined three cells doing it, but uh, I think I kind of uh, had it figured out there at the end. So anyways, uh, the way it turned out is, uh, like I was saying earlier, it's uh, 28 strips total that will carry... Uh, maximum if 10, 10 amps a piece is 280 or recommended 5 amps a piece so it's 140 amps total which is uh, more than plenty of current so anyways the, the way it works out as you can see this is the main positive on this side right here main positive comes through here and the cells all connect right here then it snakes over this way connects this way down this way down here and then comes out and the main negative comes out right here so uh, 
the next step will be is uh, I'm gonna take this pack apart and then take the wires this uh, plug and a wire off and I'm gonna transfer it over to here so basically what this is is a six uh, gauge uh, wire it uh, can carry up to 120 amps of current here I'll show you this is from the website where I got it so if you watch if you see right here four gauge not six gauge right here six gauge wire outside of engine space is 120 amps or 102 amps inside so it can carry 120 amps worth of current it uh, has a nice 105 degrees celsius insulation so it'll get hot definitely it'll get hot at 120 amps but it will uh, it'll work so i'm gonna take this apart transfer over the way it works is a uh, I pretend these already. I know I kind of run out of uh, space on the camera, but uh, pretend this already with uh, just a regular solder, and uh, the wire will solder to every single one of these, and it comes right back around this way. And same thing on this side, it comes back around this way. And what I'll do, I'll just bend these nice and tight. You'll see how it all turned out. This is uh, the way this one's done, and it, I think it turned out pretty decent. And uh, so let's uh, get these uh, this wire transferred and uh, keep going. Alrighty guys, so I soldered the wires in uh, for the positive and the negatives. It kind of went all the way across and uh, got them connected. Then I just bent them in and uh, there's what it turned out. So I should be able to pull 120 amps from here without <laughs> any problems. Uh, so the next step, uh, I'm going to add this balance connector. Uh, what it is, I'll be able to hook it up to my RC charger. My RC charger is right here, so if you see, I'll be able to... Uh, be able to balance the pack when I need to down the road. Uh, these ones are pretty simple to hook up. So you start with the red and go to the main positive. Next one over will connect down here. Third one, fourth one, and a fifth one will end on the main negative. And that's how you hook up 4S uh, uh, balance connector. Anyway, so I'm gonna hook up one of these. I'm also gonna hook up one of these connectors and uh, one of the XT60 connectors, just one. I just wanna have a variety of connections uh, for the pack so I could uh, draw power from it uh, any way I like. Alrighty guys, we'll keep going. Alrighty guys, uh, got all the plugs connected. Let me show you, flip this around. So, uh, yes, my Anderson plug, XT60 connector balance plug and then I think it's Tamiya or something like that these plugs called uh, I don't know what they're exactly what they're called but it's all connected uh, I double check the balance connector so you just basically check the voltage in between each pin and it's at 3.3 volts so everything is connected good as far as this one goes and uh, let me show you the other side again yeah I just uh, soldered the plug back into here to the main wire going in so regardless it's uh, getting a good connection and the uh, next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna add the hot glue to here uh, just to kind of secure everything in place so it doesn't wiggle around so it's a nice solid unit and also 
I got uh, the shrink wrap. So I got the shrink wrap I'm going to put on and cover up this whole battery. And I'm going to reuse these end caps from the last battery. This is just another shrink wrap that's already shrunk and I cut it out to kind of fit on the, to the ends of the battery. So the ends are going to be black and I got this sweet looking red shrink wrap that I put on the whole over the whole battery all right i'll get this done i'll show you the final result all righty guys so the pack is done my 12 volt pack is done it's a life po4 4s pack as you watch me build it uh charging it up right now so we're pushing about six amps into it uh yeah i'm pretty excited to how it turned out i think it turned out real good i'm gonna show you around a little bit and i'll show you this side yeah, it looks real cool. Kind of looks a little pink versus the red, but uh, it's okay there. Uh, anyways, so it's going to be a great pack. 120 amp uh, connection right there. I'll be able to run my spot welder and all that stuff off of it. We'll test it out once uh, it's done charging. Also be able to run all kinds of stuff. Uh, so the benefit of uh, running the live PL4 versus like the lithium ion regular lithium ion cells is that it's closely matches the 12 volts so whenever i hook up my inverter to it my 12 volt inverter it's going to be work a lot better versus a, a before with my old pack i couldn't charge it all the way otherwise the over voltage protection on the inverter would kick in and you can also build a 3s packs with regular lithium ions but then the voltage is a bit too low compared to 12 volts so this is going to be a perfect uh, 12 volt pack be able to jump start the cards with it and all kinds of cool stuff so really excited i uh, hope you guys liked the project uh, liked it if you liked it disliked it and disliked it then make sure you subscribe see you in the next video bye